Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Reddit. One of my most anticipated figures in a very, very long time. When they first showed it, I talked about how it might be the best looking as far as source material accuracy goes uh, out of all the, all the figures in the line, and I do think for the most part they have maintained that. As is usually the case, we lost a little bit of the sharpness of the facial features. Vegeta's been a big, uh, that's been a big problem for Vegeta for a long time, and it, it's happening here a little bit, but for the most part, they really got a great look down for Raditz. There is definitely some unique stuff to this figure, though there's kind of a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. Alrighty, this guy stands to the top of his, let's just do the top of where his head would be. It's about 16 centimeters. If you want to include the hair, we're closer to 17 and a half. And that's going to make him just about, let's say, six and a quarter and then closer to seven. Right around there, that'll give you a good enough idea. And before we get into anything else, let's go ahead and just do a quick height comparison with Mr. Goku. And as you can see, that is pretty much what it should be. Are they probably a little bit closer than they should be in height? Maybe. Maybe Raditz is a tiny bit short, but ever so slightly. I don't think it's enough to be a problem. All right, now before we get into the review, let's go ahead and do a question of the day. Which is your favorite between these two options, Raditz or Turles? Let me know. All right, moving on to the review. For the aesthetics, like I mentioned, they did do a really good job capturing the likeness on this guy. Uh, some people have complained he's a little bit too stocky. Maybe for some artwork, but most of the time this is pretty much what he looks like and I do have a fix for that also. And it's a very easy fix. Uh, maybe some people may not notice it right away, but at least on mine, when it came out of the package, the arms were pretty low on the body. They look kind of like that. See how much lower the arm is? It puts it down much farther and makes him look stockier. Uh, and the thing is, most Dragon Ball characters, Dragon Ball Z characters especially, their shoulders are really high and really broad and really square. And so this makes it look funny. It doesn't look like you would expect it to. It's lower than it should be relative to the shoulder pad and to the rest of the body. And the good thing is, the butterfly joint itself can actually lean up a decent amount and then you can get that shoulder all the way up there and tuck it into the shoulder pad and it does make him look a little bit leaner a little bit taller a little bit more source accurate if you're running into that issue it's a very easy fix not every butterfly joint we've seen can rotate so if you didn't notice that now you have a little bit more versatility in your adjustment posing and you might like the way the figure looks a little bit more so hopefully that helps you otherwise though i do think it works pretty well sometimes he's drawn very slender that's always the case with these characters, but I think as a rule, this is a very accurate, very source accurate release. Uh, I know some people have said the brown's a little bit too brown, a little bit too dark. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes it's fairly orange, sometimes it's just less saturated. I don't know, I think it's good enough. I would prefer it not be as close to the tail as it is, but I do think it looks okay, it looks fine. The red bands on his leg and his arm could be a little bit more red, a little more, uh, not scarlet, I guess, more like a blood red. Um, but again, it's a very tiny detail. I think it's fine. I'll say the skin is nice. It's a nice matte finish. It looks okay. He's a little bit yellow, not too much. A little bit. You can compare him to Goku. It's not too much different, but there, it's a slight change in color. And I think that's okay. You know, everybody wouldn't be the exact same color, and I doubt they were, honestly, in the uh, anime. I didn't go back and check his skin tone, but as far as the skin tone goes, what I'm talking about is the finish, and I think it's fine. It looks really good. Uh, the only thing that might make him stand out is a little bit of shading. There's no shading on him anywhere, and it would definitely help his skin tone. In fact, the only place we have shading that I can find is on the tip of his tail. The alternate tail piece is shaded very dark. Uh, and I don't remember there being a reason for that like in the anime or anything like that, so you guys can let me know if that's a thing. But otherwise, there's no shading anywhere, and that would have definitely helped. That being said, the paint that is on here is very clean. All the line work around his armor bits, very, very nice. Same thing for his arm and leg band. The wrist armor is also very clean. The feet, there's really no issue with the paint job. It's very nice. We have the satiny finish for the brown bits. We have the matte finish for the skin, and we have the glossy, maybe metallic, just ever so slightly metallic parts for the armor up here, satin for the gloves. It looks great. I have no issues with that at all. The faces are very clean, the paint job. Uh, the scouter looks good. The hair is just solid black, but it has a little bit of a luster to it, a little bit of a satin finish. 
Uh, I'm very pleased with the aesthetic on this guy. I do wish we had shading on the skin. I don't think the armor needs it as much, but of course a wash would go a long way if you were so inclined to make him look a little bit better. You know, instead of having brown recessed lines, a little bit of a darker wash in there might make it pop. But it's a very aesthetically pleasing figure and they did a good job, all the skin tones match. Obviously we have knees and elbows that are slightly glossy, but they don't stand out too much. I like it. I think they did a really good job. So from an aesthetic standpoint, I stand by what I predicted in that it's one of the best looking as far as source accuracy goes and as far as figures go, one of the best looking they've done. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for the aesthetic. Some shading would go a long way, but it's not necessary. Very pleased with it. Okay, as far as accessories go, we do have obviously his normal arms. We do get a set of crossed arms. I haven't had any trouble with mine yet, though I didn't have trouble on a couple figures, which ended up being problematic for a lot of people. So again, your mileage may vary on that. Be careful when you're swapping out parts. Anytime they're just pressure fit parts, the more you swap them, the more risk there is. So be cautious with that. I have not had a problem with them though. So take that for what you will. As far as the faces go, we have the neutral face that comes on them in the package, a slightly smirky face, a startled face, and then a yelling face, all very nicely done. They still maintain a high level of accuracy, not quite as nice as the original promo image just showed, but that's almost always the case with this line. We lose a little bit of that detail, become a little bit softer, but still very nicely done. We do get the two fist hands that come on them in the package, then we get two different sets of style pose hands. That should be enough. I would prefer some more hands, but that should be fine. Uh, we do have the tail that's wrapped around his body, and then we have the tail that does just kind of hang. Neither are bendy or anything like that, so not a ton of versatility, but you do have some option there. And then lastly, we do get an alternate back plate, which will help for him to use a display stand. That's about it. Not a ton of accessories. Do I think it's enough? Yes, probably is enough. Um, you can also remove the scouter if you want, but he has no ear. So yeah, you know, probably don't do that. And that's it for the accessories. So I'll say that's enough. I don't think it's a ton, but I think it'll get the job done. So I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, that should be good enough. Okay, now, as far as the articulation goes, this guy does have a few unique things. There are two that stand out in particular, kind of three. So let's go ahead and get into that, and I'll point those things out as we go. The first thing I want to talk about, which is not one of those three things, is the hair. We do get a giant ball hinge underneath there. You won't be able to see it, don't worry. It's just a big ball hinge that lets this chunk of hair move. It does move, and, and the ball hinge holds the hair just fine, but the hair is solid PVC. It's heavy as heck. It'll rotate, of course, and you can swing that ball hinge around if you want to rotate the hair sideways a little bit, but you just don't have that much range. But yes, the hair is very heavy. If you balance him right, it works. As you can see, it will work, but the more it sticks out, the more you need to balance him. If you bring it straight down, it'll work okay. Very heavy. I don't know why they do PVC. Um, they could use this material, which is probably ABS, and it's a lot lighter. But it's, it's a lot harder to mold because with PVC, this stuff flexes. So you can have some undercuts and things that you can't get away with with a rigid plastic. So I'm guessing that's why. Eh, it is what it is. The ha heavy hair has been a thing in the Dragon Ball line for a while. And it's just something we have to get used to and accept. So that's okay as far as I'm concerned. Now the next joint I want to talk about is unique. And we're going to pop his face off to show you. And that is the neck hinge is an actual hinge. There's nothing that we've seen before going on right there. It's just a hinge. It'll rotate, don't get me wrong, it'll rotate on there, but it's an actual hinge. There's no ball involved. And that's fine, they did that probably because of the weight. They could adjust the tightness much easier that way and it, it's suitably tight, there's no problem with that. And that's fine. And you do get your rotation. There is no leaning involved, unfortunately. So you just get your rotation and your hinge there. I think that's fine. Uh, you cannot cock the head to an angle though, which does limit posability to some extent. And I'm okay with that personally because of the sacrifice for being able to support the hair. However, one of the issues we do get out of this situation is that that hinge is fairly far back relative to the face. And as you use the hinge, it separates the face from the head, very similar to Go Tanks. Now his problem is not as severe, but as you can see, it took almost no effort to take that off, which means it was fairly far removed just by using that neck hinge. Now, of course, if you don't go down forward, especially all the way, it's not gonna be a problem, but it could be a problem for people. And I have had people report to me that it's very irritating for them every time they try to pose the head the face tends to want to come off, at least some. So be aware of that. It's not a great situation. I'm not sure how much I'm going to fault them for it, considering it's for the sake of the giant heavy hair. What are you going to do? 
Uh, okay, so the neck is also on a ball peg, and in conjunction with that hinge, it's kind of annoying to use because you can't really do much with it. Um, there's a little bit of leaning, but because of the way the head works, it's very minimal. So there's not a whole lot you can do with this head due to the big hair, both for engineering purposes and then just for it's in the way. I can't fault them too much, but it is something to consider. Now we have the shoulder pads, which are on a slightly different design than before. Not one of the big deals I wanted to talk about. The neck was one. This is just a regular thing. We have our little like double swivel-y type thing going on for the shoulder pad. Not sure what purpose that really serves, why they did that. Uh, they don't pop off as easy as they used to, but they're still just as much in the way as, all, as ever. And they do still hinge like always, so I don't really know why they changed it, but they did. And it's fine. They're still just as much of a nuisance as before. As I mentioned, we have the butterfly joint, which does swing out and is moderately useful, I suppose. It's not terribly ugly or anything. Um, and I guess because of this shifty joint, you can kind of do that and maybe that's what they were going for, but it's still very, very specifically useful. It's still gonna be in the way and it's still gonna wanna pop up like that depending on what your posing is. But that does add some utility to the butterfly joint. So I will give them credit there. If that's what they were going for, I'm giving them, I'm assuming that is, good job for that. I like that, that works. It helps it look a lot better than just having it pop up like that all the time. So that's cool. And like I said, the butterfly joint does have a rocker to it. So that'll be a little bit more helpful. The shoulder itself is connected on a ball peg that lets the arm move around on the butterfly joint. And then as you can see, the hinge itself works very nicely. Bicep swivel is fine, it's a little stiff. That's what she said, but it should work fine. You may run into some issues swapping out the joints, I have, or the alternate arms, I have not, but it is stiff, so be careful. Double jointed elbow works just fine. It's not the best looking elbow we've ever seen, but it's functional, it's just pretty weird looking. Uh, I don't know, they've done that a few times now with the weird joints, let me see if I can, yeah, if you bring it farther forward, it helps, but it's still really weird. I don't know what they were thinking and why they did that. They've done joints before, this type of joint. So it's weird, don't like that. And then for the wrists, we have what is almost normal in that it's a ball hinge. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than we normally see, which is a good thing. But the weird thing is for a joint like this where you have the extra coverage of that brown piece, a ball peg would have been better. It would have worked better, it would have been easier. Uh, because of that extra coverage, it's very difficult to rotate that ball hinge around in different poses, whereas with a ball peg, it could have just moved however you wanted to freely. So be aware of that. Technically, it'll work, but it's gonna be a little more finicky. For the torso, it's a different design than we normally have. Normally, we have a hinge with a cup and a ball peg. In this case, it's just a ball peg on a hinge. So he leans forward and back on the hinge. Works pretty well. There's minimal gapping going on behind him. So that's good. Leaning back works pretty well too. No gapping going forward. Uh, I'm fine with that. It works just, it works fine going forward and back. And then the, here's the downside though, is that ball peg serves very little purpose. You get some rotation on it and you get a touch of leaning, but barely. It's very limited in that regard. So uh, I'm guessing they did that again for the weight of the hair so that he didn't just flop backwards, but you do lose some versatility in that joint. That's the way it goes. For the lower body, you have another ball peg that lets the hips move a little bit. It's very minimal. The rotation, well, there you go, you can see it. It's there, but you really get very little range out of it. At least for me, I can't get it to move much. It doesn't really lean. It's more of a, it's just a connection really. I can't get it to rotate because of the way it's been done and it doesn't really lean. So it's just a physical connection. So that's a, it's, his torso is very limited, I guess is the ultimate verdict on that. But we do have the hinges here to get these guys out of the way. And then the hips are your standard hips. Pretty good range out to the side, no issues there. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Plenty of range, I'd say that's fine. Bringing the leg forward works, but the, the armor definitely gets in the way. So that's gonna be a problem. Not much they can do about that again. Going out to the back, really limited range compared to most of these releases because he has fixed butt cheeks. We don't have a floating piece here. Like you guys have noticed, a lot of the time we have a separate floating piece here that goes with the crotch that lets it rotate forward and back while maintaining the sculpt. This guy does not have that. We have a traditional front crotch and then the butt part or the rear part of the crotch piece, as I call it, is actually sculpted butt cheeks. So you can't bring the leg back at all. That does limit posability quite a bit. Why'd they do that? Not entirely sure. It seems like on this design especially, it would have suited him to have, no pun intended, this whole black part right here on the hip 
and on the butt cheek to be a separate floating piece and you could have better range, but we don't. So that's definitely a little bit of a bummer. Thigh swivel is a thigh swivel, that's fine. Double jointed knees are, again, we have some gapping and some ugly joints if you don't take care to move the knee itself, but it does work and is functional enough and it looks okay. So that's fine, I'll take it. Not the worst we've seen. And then down here, another thing that I wanna mention is we have ball hinges. We haven't had ball hinged ankles as a regular thing for a long time. So this is the third thing. The head was one, the torso was two, this is three. Ball hinge ankles are generally a good thing. You get forward and back on there. It's not a ton, it's probably enough. Uh, I do think they could work out better range still. They seem to not put that much effort into the ankles. You get a good ankle rocker out of it, so that's cool. And then we have a toe hinge, which is still ugly and it's offset. It's an offset hinge, which makes it stick out at the bottom. It doesn't really work, but it's stiffer, so eh, it's whatever. So uh, the articulation on this guy is definitely unique in a few different places and mostly useful. Not as good as it could be, but good enough. I like the slight adjustment to the shoulder pads, which I'm assuming was purposeful and it did work, so that's pretty good. But the changes in the neck and the torso, eh, take them or leave them. I, I don't love them, but I get why they're there. And then for the hips, it could just be better, but it's still fine. So I'm gonna give it a final verdict for articulation for figure arts of uh, seven out of 10. It's average for a good figure. There's nothing wrong with it really, uh, but it could definitely be better. But yeah, again, nothing really wrong with it. So the tail tends to pop apart, by the way. You can just pop that back in. I can't really see what I'm doing, I'll just leave it. Okay, so final verdict on this guy. Is it the most best perfect release ever? Definitely not. It does look great, it poses well enough though and has a decent batch of accessories. So I don't think anybody's gonna have any huge gripes about it. And I definitely recommend it. As far as Dragon Ball collectors go, this is one of the stronger pieces you could choose to collect. So if you're into Raditz, if you're into the earlier story arcs, if you're into just characters that look like this, I'm gonna say go ahead and pick it up. You're gonna enjoy it and it really doesn't have too many objective issues with it. So I'm gonna give it a final verdict of eight out of 10. It's a really strong release and I recommend it for just about anybody who's interested in this line or this character design or just anything that looks like this. So there it is guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.